Welcome to the IVM Podcast Network. IVM Like is an IVM production and if you enjoy listening to our pop culture discussion you should check out our brand new show Bollywood Scene Stealers hosted by journalist Indu Mirani who sits down to chat with Bollywood's most famous character actors like Ranveer Shori, Satish Kaushik, Gulshan Grover and more. Episodes are out every Monday. Check it out. If you're a listener of IVM Likes and a Sox fan, which I'm sure is a Venn diagram that's totally possible, I have great news for you. You check out the Moja Club. They make amazing funky socks that you can buy on their website or even better, just get a subscription. Sign up for six months or a year and you'll get a pair delivered to your house every month. They'll even throw in a free pair at the end of the month. And if you go to their website, themojaclub.in right now, you get a whole 33% off by just applying the code IVM Likes. It's IVM Likes with no spaces. 33% off. Did you hear that? Themojaclub.in. Welcome to another episode of IBM Likes. It's Wednesday, it's 5 p.m., which means uh, we're going to sit around and talk about our favorite books and movies and TV shows. Yay. We're going to do a round of recommendations as always. And then uh, in our second segment, we're going to talk about trailers that lied to us. Straight up lied. Yeah. I'm in the studio today with Josh. Hello. Yes. Josh is one of our producers who produces shows like Made in India mm. and The Seen and the Unseen. Indeed. And we also have Naveen. Yes, after some coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Naveen produces our shows uh, Geek Fruit and Cyrus Says and he hosts his own show called Keeping It Queer. And I'm Sharanya. I just host this one. <laughs> and on course. <laughs> sure, I produce on course, that's true. And keep shit together over here. That's basically. true. I try. Damn. I try. I try. So. All right, so uh, let's uh, start with our round of recommendations. Let's start with Naveen today. All right, the one I'm going to recommend today... Uh, is something that everybody almost seen, but then I still want to reach out to people who were like me, mm. have been unaware of of the show. It's called Better Call Saul. Yes, this mm. is a spin-off from Breaking Bad. Uh, Breaking Bad is one of my favorite TV shows of all time, and there's a spin-off show called Better Call Saul. It's a prequel. Ba- yeah, it's a prequel yeah. uh, based on uh, Saul Goodman's uh, adventures. Mm. Saul Goodman before he became Saul Goodman, what was his life, and how is he such a shady lawyer? What did he do? So he was known as Jimmy McGill, and he has his brother who's a an idiot. <laughs> his brother is a successful lawyer, not mm-hmm. really an idiot. Oh. But he, he basically goes out of his way to you know mess with him, and that's the whole uh, that's the whole plot of the show. Essentially, we are introduced to some of the characters that we come to love, like Jonathan Banks, uh, Mike Ehrman Trout, yeah. and who's still a badass while doing the same stuff on the side. And uh, the show is is very well written. Again, like. Uh, Obviously, Vince Gilligan and uh, the guy who wrote Breaking Bad with him also is there involved in the show. So, writing-wise, it's pretty strong. First season kind of takes its time to settle in. The characters are introduced. But season two is where the real juice is. And I think as they build to season three, they really have something going. And same like how with Breaking Bad, every episode would start with, like, every season would start with the first episode. First few minutes, you look at what's happening to Walt right now. Similar, we see James McGill... Uh, Saul Goodman <laughs> now like on on uh, working at like a donut place yeah. somewhere in, yeah. in uh, all, somewhere in America and uh, his life is now much different and he still wants to be that lawyer so what we learn from the show again is like this guy can talk you know he can mm. use his words to manipulate people and uh, control everything but on the same time at the same time he's also ruining a lot of lives uh, which are kind of like linked to his so I really enjoyed the show because uh, Bob Odenkirk yeah. uh, has taken his time paid his dues wrote for so many people and he as a comic has come so far and I admire the fact that he's got his own show now So I love Better yeah. Call Saul I feel yeah. like it's uh, such a well written show and it's so bleak it like is. it's so bleak but still like really wonderful to watch and they do like like Breaking Bad they do those really great frames yeah. that are like lots of shadow and light play mm. and I really like how the brother's character he's, his brother is an older lawyer who uh, I don't know what that specific problem is called is basically he's afraid of light electricity yeah hypersensitivity okay. hypersensitivity to electricity so he always has like a silver foil around him and he's afraid to go out yeah it's a space blanket <laughs> but the way they twist his character from a poor thing who seems to be um, you know having some problems to what he what his brain how his brain works is really fantastic mm. Season 3 just started Yeah now, And I they're think. going to bring, bring back Gus Fring Gus obviously. of course and That timeline is running up to Gus That's true Yeah, yeah I'm so amazing. happy I still haven't seen Breaking Bad <gasps> Now that is a travesty <laughs> uh, Josh you don't recommend a book Okay so the book I'm going to recommend is um, From the Ruins of Empire <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's oh, funny. How funny is from, the book? From the Ruins of Empire by Pankaj Mishra. <laughs> no, that's funny. 
ke baad <laughs> but so pankaj mishra is uh, he writes a lot of non fiction hmm. i think he's written one fiction book called the romantics but uh, he's written a bunch of sort of travel logs plus historical sort of um books non fiction books and this is one of the historical ones hmm. so this book basically covers all the so uh, the arab intellectuals chinese intellectuals or writers and indian writers also from the 19th century or 18th to 19th century who recognized um western imperialism and what it was going to do to the east kind of like how western yeah. imperialism was going to become an issue basically so these were the people that kind of recognized how um sort of uh, basically one of the prime examples at the time 18th 19th century 19th hmm. century particular was uh, british rule in india so because the british had taken over india this was like a hot topic amongst a lot of people including like karl marx and um a bunch of people and uh, just an example of one of the people that he covers there's this one guy called Jamaluddin Al Afghani who's like a very famous um, you nailed that pronunciation man oh, thanks <laughs> the jamal part of it <laughs> i don't know if i nailed it but um he was sort of this arab intellectual who was trying to so he he wrote a lot of articles and um, pieces and essays about uh, how the old sort of conservative Islam could be reconciled with rationality mm. you know with science and all he was trying to bridge that gap mm. first mm. and then subsequently he was trying to unify Islam against western imperialism mm. so his sort of view kind of changed over the course of time but he he was the precursor to what we now see as the muslim brotherhood the um, you know people who've taken his writing is kind of use it still today to rail against the west in a way mm. but he was one of the first people to recognize how the, like western imperialism was going to become a problem because a lot of a- nations in the middle east were aping um uh, european sort of trends and uh, like turkey he one example he gives was turkey like turkey was a big uh, uh, adopt of sort of european um, clothes and mm. just fashions and those kinds of things and markets also like their kind of products and just he most people used india as an example of how this kind of will screw the native population oh, okay. you know? so he his whole warning was like islam is going to suffer because of this so mm. we have to be careful so the whole book kind of uh, tries to convey that there was like a resistance to western imperial like western imperialism is a constantly portrayed as this kind of you know civilized people Correct. who are going to bring us barbarians yeah. out of the yeah. but his whole thing was there was you know a lot of thinkers at the time who who had you know a better agenda or who saw that uh, western imperialism was more barbaric than hmm. what we hmm. than what they think they were right. you know sort of crusading yeah. to help and it took pride in the fact that they had their own culture and their own yeah. stuff right yeah. and that's uh, biswa kalyan read the comic he put out a status and it was very interesting to see I because saw, yeah. right now in india like people are abusing snap deal instead of snapchat so <laughs> yeah. instead of sonu nigam <laughs> yeah. and given the fact that today in the modern time when everything is a google click away yeah. we can misspell and miss miss place everything yeah. how about in the history books when everything was like yeah. word of mouth and people yeah. do this all the time where they're tweeting photos from textbooks that just say awful things and yeah. wrong histories and there's no sometimes it's like do you trust knowledge that's out there because the internet is free for all which yeah. means anybody can put up anything yeah. and how you choose the facts you believe in are and also this also is depending on of like i think in the west generally they feel like they've done like eastern countries a, a favor. favor yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. of course yeah. of course so that just kind of putting that into perspective also that mm. these people were fairly barbaric as like much as they thought they in america still make jokes about how terrorists are hiding in caves but then if they don't have houses which you bombed you idiots <laughs> yeah. how where would they live exactly so, what is the book called again It's called From the Ruins of Empire by Pankaj Mishra. Pankaj Mishra. Ah, oh, sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah, that sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. Okay, I am going to recommend a movie today. So, um basically in my head, uh, there's a three-part um uh, what do you call structure of this TV show that started way back in the 2000s called The Thick of It. It was a British uh, political satire show. It had maybe about four seasons and like at best 20 episodes. It was a really funny show. And then when the show ended they decided to make a movie out of it. They mm-hmm. made a movie and then uh, the same writers went on to create Weep mm-hmm. which is the one of the funniest political satires yeah, currently. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the movie uh, is what I want to recommend today because it is a fantastic movie. It's called In the Loop. Mm-hmm. Uh it's directed by Armando something whose name yeah, I cannot pronounce. I've That's seen that right. I, this is That's such right. a good movie. Yeah. It's a really good movie. Uh of course Weep is very different because it deals with us politics which mm. is something that's uh, very rife for comedy and uh, also kind of like a like a 
political correctness that comes with being a politician in the US at that time. Mm. Uh, so this mo- movie, um, it stars Peter Capaldi, who was the you know the twelfth Doctor. Mm. Uh, he's the director of communications for the for the Prime Minister. Uh, and one, uh, so the movie is set in the time where the US and the UK are kind of having some. A uh, discussion about the Middle East, and one minister accidentally on a BBC um, radio interview says a war with the Middle East is unforeseeable. Hmm. So that w- that word unforeseeable just g- gets like blown up proportion. People are like, this is war is going to happen. So now, as the director of communications, it's Peter Kavali's job to make sure that the politicians are in line and cannot say these things. Hmm. Uh, and this minister. He decides, you know what? I'm a I'm a cabinet minister. I should be allowed to do what I want. So he tries to go fix it, and then every word he uses makes it worse, because it's, if it's not unforeseeable, it's uh, foreseeable. If it's not un uh, inevitable, it's evitable. Yeah. Uh, and he just doesn't know what to do, and he ends up becoming like a poster boy for the people who want war and the people who don't <laughs> want war. Uh, the great bit about it is that Peter Capaldi is the most foul-mouthed like. Minister, not minister, director of communications. He's constantly yelling at them and cursing them, um, and it comes across so like genuine to him because I feel like th- that uh, British accent, yelling curses at you, is just almost polite but also so brutal. Mm. Um, it's a really funny movie. It's just like a light but also really dark movie. Uh, it's called In the Loop. It's a little difficult to find now. But I'm sure if you uh, try enough. Yeah, you'll be able to find it. But generally, when Britishers dirty talk, it's quite raunchy. <laughs> he's, he's, he's got a Scottish accent. Yeah, he's yeah. got a Scottish he's accent. Scottish, yeah. yeah, and there's a there's like a lot of descriptive cursing. Yeah. Um. Some I I can't, I've always thought like the the innovation in cursing is mm. something that like the British can really achieve very well. Yeah. Um. And this movie is like it's just full of it. Which is your most favorite? Oh colorful. God. No. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite ones, which we'll probably have to censor, mm. um, is from actually the show, the thick of it, where it's such a simple line. It's the way he is just used to portray how he is as a person. He's standing at the door. Somebody knocks. Like he's standing in his office. Somebody knocks at the door and asks if they can come in at the door. And he says, "Either get the f- in or f- the f- out." <laughs> and I'm like, That's, it's not even a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can use the word anyway and yeah. it still makes sense. Uh, yeah, so it's a really fun movie. It's called In the Loop. Mm, All right. Nice. So Naveen, you recommend it. Better, Better Call, Call Saul. Saul. Yes, please get on it. And From the Ruins of Empire. And I recommend it. In the Loop. All right, let's take a quick break right now. And then when we come back, we'll talk about trailers that lied to us. Rants, crazy conversations, absurd questions and everything in between. Cyrus Says is the podcast where I, <coughs> Cyrus Brocha, let loose and talk to interesting people from across different walks of life. Uh, well, people who are available actually, not more than that. Catch new episodes every Monday on iTunes, Audio Boom, or the all-new IVM Podcast app. Happy listening, but only for a few minutes. And we are back. Uh, in our next segment today, we're going to talk about trailers and trailers that have lied to us and misled us sometimes. <clears throat> Uh, we've been talking about trailers because I feel like in the current time we live in, hmm. every time a movie puts out a trailer, the buzz is incredible. Yeah. It's in fact, it's almost unconscious. It's like you have to have watched this trailer. It's not even like, it's like getting shamed for not having watched a movie. It's hmm. like you haven't watched this trailer. Yeah. You haven't seen the Thor trailer. You haven't seen the News Hours trailer. It's a hundred crore race, but for trailers now. How yeah. Four million yeah. views. Which term, That's true. Which also, it, it's a little pissing off because now you get a trailer, trailer and then you get, trailer. A, you get a teaser oh. and you get a motion graphic poster sometimes, which is just a poster. I don't know why that we need a motion moving poster. Yeah. But. I don't really uh, want to talk about this. Like you get a glimpse of the best scenes from the trailer, yeah. then you get to watch the whole trailer. We don't want that. It's too much. A teaser for a trailer is just too much. What is the difference between a teaser, a teaser and a trailer? A teaser basically teases the idea that <laughs> and a trailer trails you. What yeah, it trails you on a path to to <laughs> watching the. No, so the teaser is essentially smaller, right? It's like it's just like some glimpses into what's going to happen. So you know the teasers would generally be like a dark shot going to the light, sure. like you know, like if you look at the recent uh, Star Wars trailer, The Last Jedi, it has just like it leaves you craving for more. That's the sure. whole idea of the teaser. But do you feel like we need these many? Trailers and teasers for one movie. No, we don't. Not as DC as spoilers. I, I think like DC it if they just had a great thing. marketing campaign idea. Like I'd be okay with it. Like, but just this teaser one, teaser yeah. two, 
trailer one. But now people don't do more than three. I they think. do. They like, do. Like, like, like look at the Batman vs Superman. I was just talking about. Uh, I'm uh. going to complain about that because I hate that movie on on the whole. Even the extended cut. <laughs> everybody, but, everybody but, hates but it. But the trailers. <laughs> there were like three or four BBS. trailers that came out, and there was like TV spots. Then when when the World Series happened, then there's more trailers during that time. There's more spots. There's character sw- introductions. Yeah, yeah. Everything. I everything. do feel like sometimes. The, and then of course there's trailers and teasers, and then there's also celebrities going on other talk shows to promote this movie. Yeah. 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 And sometimes those itself are viral things you have to watch. Like, oh, you have to watch this one on Conan talking about this funny thing in the movie. It's too much. Yeah. Then by the time the movie comes out, I'm like, I am done. I'm saturated with information about this movie. It's almost like they're making trailer for BuzzFeed, so they can do screenshots <laughs> and then put the trailer at the end. You can watch the trailer. Yeah, I knew I can watch it. I have YouTube BuzzFeed. But that's the whole point, right? Like, why why should we go through the entire process of knowing what the story is, the characters and everything? We don't need that much information. Right? Yeah, it's Generally, too much. there's so much inf- information overload that they say, oh. You watch this scene on your laptop. Now watch it in 70 mm and enjoy it much more over the popcorn. <laughs> That's the whole idea right now. Yeah, there are a lot of trailers. I mean, obviously, making a trailer is an art because you're trying to, you know, portray a whole movie within two minutes or yeah. whatever. It's it's it, but it's become fairly just the damn, you just. Hear I agree. That. That's what I'm saying. It should yeah. be, but but so many Those trailers just try to. Mislead I don't even you. think they use voiceovers anymore. The, that they guy do. died. Yeah. <laughs> they died. That's right. They yeah. don't use it anymore. They don't. No, but like some trailers, either they ruin it by. Are putting in all the jokes up front in the trailer, so the movie no longer has the surprise elements that you wanted to laugh yeah, at. Yeah. Mm. Or they portray something completely different from what the movie is going to be, mm. which I guess is one of those things where you know you want the trailer to be dramatic and you know get attention, but the movie is not that. Yeah. Which is absolutely the most pissing off thing. I, I remember this really well because um, there was a Ryan Gosling movie, and I saw hate for this trailer online. There was a Ryan Gosling movie called The Drive. Oh, just yeah. drive, just, just, just drive, drive, not the drive. That's, That's the best true. soundtrack of all time. It is a great Such a good movie, film. and I saw oh, the so, movie. So it looked like it's going to be like an action-packed escapade yeah, in the movie. You know the yeah. thing is, I didn't even see the trailer. I saw the movie. I really liked it, so mm. I was trying to read up about it. And mm. most of what I found was that uh, that everybody who came from watching the trailer thought it was like going to be a Fast and Furious kind of action yeah, pack. Yeah. And it wasn't. It's a broody, dark movie. Yeah, but with like very good character. Arcs yeah, and, like, great, dark great themes, movie. But yeah. then you go into expect like. You know some car chases and yeah, some yeah. like things burning up, and mm. then you get like Ryan Gosling just looking moody as. Mm. It's uh, it's what misleading. What a great jacket though, true. and that lift scene where he kicks the guy's head into. Oh God, that pulp. scene is oh my amazing. God. That's yeah. true. So I mean, should trailers be really honest though, or should they like? I get it. They are trying to get your attention. You know. Yeah, mm. but the direct director in general like is known for misleading. There's another mm. movie called Only God Forgives, mm. which he directed mostly like in Thailand and like he took part. Like you know, the movie did not really come out rest of the world. Mm. So it's again like a very dark movie which deals with themes of religiosity mm. and uh, man being the judge of uh, another man's crimes and everything. The trailer was like just like random shots of something. It never really conveyed what the movie is about. Yeah. But if you go to watch the movie, it's hardcore gore. Like people right. are getting skewed. Right. Proper, and then like people didn't want to watch that. They're like, what the mm. f- happened? But I think they should be a little more honest upfront. What is mm. going to be like the Marvel movies have now tried the formula. Right. Like they know that they're going to have some awesome scenes which are going to be you know going to hmm. explode. People, and, yeah, 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 yeah. And then there's quir- quirky one-liners that also yeah. get people. Yeah. But they also have much more in the movie. That's what Correct. they show. Correct. This what are some, what that. are some trailers that have lied to you and like have gotten pissed, have like pissed you off about? Terminator Salvation. Mm. Uh, that was a movie I was waiting for a long time because I really am a big fan of the Terminator series. Uh, Schwarzenegger, mm. great, great, ho- like you know, it basically made my entire mm. childhood. And then when I was uh, looking through the channels, and then Terminator Salvation came on, I was like, okay, new movie, Terminator, what's happening? And uh, it had Christian Bale, it had uh, the guy from yeah. Avatar, and uh, then they did the first trailer, which was simple. Then second trailer came out, mm. which was a mind <laughs> entirely because then they. Tell you that the guy is a cyborg, half human, half cyborg, mm. and then I'm like, oh my god! And then I went for the movie. It was even worse. It was shit. It is there's a CGI Arnold Schwarzenegger who's <laughs> bulky and is throwing people around. There's no proper plot to it. Yeah. They're all just being gorilla for no reason. And I'm like, being that's gorilla. not Terminator, man. Like, just, where's the time travel element? Where's the where's the charm of the movie? Mm. You know, there was no good chase scenes. There was nothing. Right. It was just like so it was CGI. a trailer that was good. Oh no! The trailer was bad, and the show, the movie was also bad. Oh, also bad, yeah. Oh, okay. So it lied to me that it might be good, but it was not. <laughs> it gave you some hope. Yeah, like even yeah. though it spoiled the main plot. Even of the movie. even last even Suicide Squad when that came out, the first trailer with the Bohemian Rhapsody, I thought yeah. it was like super interesting. That was just them trying to be gardens. For sure, yeah. but still, I was like, 
at least it looks like they're doing something interesting mm. or this could be fun and then then the movie yeah, but speaking of guardians that. i didn't really like the first trailer though oh really yeah and then the movie like obviously became correct a yeah, cult hit huge, correct yeah. but the trailer i was like I, when i i remember sharing it on facebook i'm like the trailer doesn't even take itself seriously i don't like to mm. you know put this out there but but the movie, movie doesn't take itself seriously also yeah though, kind they of. they had the theme right yeah, trailer, yeah. right you get Fair the idea so do you have any I definitely definitely uh, Prometheus I would say. Yeah. I think this this is there on a lot of like top 10 lists and yeah. all these ch- and for me like like Naveen is a big Terminator fan. I'm a big Alien fan. <laughs> and specifically the first Alien movie. I've seen all of yeah. them, but mm. that first Alien movie was like such a just such a trip, you know. Like mm. you can't there's no kind of science fiction slash of horror film that's mm. quite like alien at least the first time i watched it plus that is like alpha at least called yeah mm. it, was like, no, it was like the, he came out with that and then blade runner after that and it was he's like really it was at a time when science fiction was a little slower man mm. you know yeah. mm. like when uh, like 2001 happened in 69 and then yeah. uh, star wars sort of came out but even if you see the first star wars it plays out a bit slow man i feel the original yeah. one anyway. yeah agree because then like in that regard they didn't have that much to sci-fi about you know yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. it was like on westerns it was like the whole influence was different man like coming out of the 70s the type because of films because see cronenberg carpenter ridley scott these guys were on the fringe of the sci-fi scene mm. doing yeah. cool shit and nobody acknowledged them until years later when they became famous exactly Are they- so yeah. when prometheus was coming out when that teaser trailer came out my god <laughs> i was so excited <laughs> because it looked exactly like how the yeah. original alien movie was going to be you know with all that good stuff like with the that ship and the the space jockey the space jockey is that guy sitting in the chair mm. with that huge gun <laughs> pointing out there <laughs> yeah just in case you nerds didn't know that <laughs> space jockey <laughs> yeah but i was just so excited and then when you saw the film it was just like from the opening scene when you don't even know like there was so much intrigue and there was so much intrigue in the first half of the film but when you find mm. when you just watch the film everything was just disappointment after disappointment i was like oh my god man yeah man are they tell us that were bad trailers but the movies were really good kingsman yeah mm. i agree kingsman. kingsman i think had like a really like the trailer looked very run of the mill mm. yeah like very like, cody banks meet james bond yeah, yeah. cody banks there's a scene here with like cool gadgets for you then you'll do something cool and then mm. yeah but then and, they they took out mark hamill from their cards and then they threw him in the into the deck last yeah. year um you know deepak takis in bombay was doing these old movie revivals or whatever mm. so they were showing eternal sunshine of the spotless mind and a mm. friend of mine had never seen it so okay. we were like we have to go And I tried to show him the trailer. Oh, maybe he's seen it. Oh, yeah, sort the of trailers scene. also. The trailer is so bad. It comes across yeah. as just a basic rom com. Jim Carrey is in it, and yeah. there's a rom com like, and it opens with like an infomercial for the you know the product, which is the memory raising thing. Hmm. It comes across so bad. I'm like, why? Would, I would never watch this movie. But the movie was really good. But that's all of Charlie Kaufman's uh, trailers really? are very bad. Even I, John Malkovich, I did not like the trailer. I was like, mm. oh my god, what is mm. this shit? Because, being John because, Malkovich. Yeah, being, being John Malkovich. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So like, you see the trailer and you're like, what is he he's going into small rooms? He's mm. talking to himself. What is happening? Because again, the the essence of the movie is not captured by Correct. a trailer. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's There hard. was a Hindi movie with called uh, Rocket Singh. Huh. Oh yeah. That had a trailer that told you the whole story. Like. They told you who he is like <laughs> aligns with late like afterward. There's no surprise element at yeah. all in the trailer. So you watch the movie, you know literally everything that's going to happen. It's a good movie. Mm. Yeah, it's a great movie for sure. But the trailer just gives away. That everything. still remains my favorite Ranveer Singh, Ranveer Kapoor yeah, movie. Yeah, he's he acts really well in that movie, yeah. and it's a genuinely well and there's like very few songs. And there's yeah, no big names. The romance anything. doesn't even matter. Yeah. Uh, but the trailer just gives away everything, everything. including like. You know the big thing is that that uh, the manager also joins this secret covert operation mm. but in the trailer you know all of it but I'm that's like, most why? bollywood movies they never really cracked how to make trailers in india you know you think so i don't remember last good trailer i watched for a hindi movie and i was excited about the fact chennai express <laughs> <laughs> I, i knew i was opening this bag of worms yeah. now when i open this george <laughs> choices yeah, in the sati movies, movies. <laughs> But yeah, Kangde Basanti has a trailer. I remember mm. again. I keep going back to that because yeah. that's a cult movie for me yeah. as well. Yeah. And they they nailed the trailer properly. Like mm. they, they knew the way they were, was. There were scenes where like you know Amir Khan is running and then he goes back in the past as Chandra Shekhar Azad. I'm mm. like, oh my god, this is so cool! I want to watch this movie. And they genuinely Correct. wanted. But apart from that, like hardly any trailers like leave you wanting more because for Indians, it's mostly the star power. Correct. They don't care about what's going yeah. to happen. Correct. Then there's like one stanza of a song. Chennai <laughs> Express one, two, three, four. One, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the song. Give me more, more something. And Deepika yeah. doing that terrible insult yeah. in accent. Yeah, oh my. God. I think one of the things that I I've been doing for some time actually 
feel like I'll continue is to just not watch any trailers because they color your opinion of something so much, yeah. and for the better or for the worse. But it's just like I'd rather go in with no expectations. But that's like going underground in the current day and age with internet around. No, it's not that difficult. Uh, I haven't watched the Star Wars trailer. Why would I? Because I've not watched Star Wars. Oh yeah, my god! Have you seen? seen? It's it's crazy. I wonder if it's going to be. Do you think it's going to be the last film? No. No way, no, why? dude. I, why uh, would Disney feel, make so much money out I of this? Like, why yeah. would they do that? I feel like they should make it the last film. No, no, no. <laughs> they have like four more four more trilogies probably. <laughs> I think things are things are avoidable if you want them to be. I'm just saying, like, I want to go now watch a movie with and like just genuinely experience it without expecting either the jokes or something or whatever. Mm. I mean, I don't really want to spend money I, on it, of course. Mm. But uh, I, don't I mind. had this issue. With, so I think they um, should make you pay for watching the trailer. If like if every time you go to watch a trailer on YouTube, you pay ten rupees to watch a trailer. That's yeah, too exa- much. Exactly. Then then you want to like earn it, right? Then you want to really see what's so special. So now about you it. to read a review of a trailer before spending that ten rupees. You'll be like, let me see what Buffy said about this trailer. So probably there's an industry for that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Rajiv must be making trailers. Money. That's yeah. too much. Like I don't mind going into a theater to watch a movie and then see those trailers. Cause those are long cut. Proper trailers, not just um, you know everybody sharing it on social media. Mm. So now I have to watch it. That mm. I don't mind. And then we go Vajradanti is along. Where yeah. did people watch trailers before YouTube became a common phenomena? Like cinema. on channels like ETC and Z Music. No, I think you had to go to the cinema to watch a movie, and yeah. then you see the other. You'd wait. Oh, the see. TV TV spots, man. TV spots, mm. a lot of TV spots with that. Fair I, I just have no memory of the time before YouTube. No, definitely. Don't you like, watching TV at any point in your no, life? No, of course I do, but yeah. I still feel like. Uh, Things are more excess. I mean, so like even MTV for that matter. Mm. If like they were playing two songs in one hour, mm. then there'd be like middle ads were just like trailers oh, of enough. random stuff. Fair mm-hmm. enough. And even Sophie's music would show. <laughs> <laughs> music. But yeah, all right, TV, guys. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. So ban trailers and make us pay for or it. Or just make one trailer, one trailer per movie. That's all I'll watch. Yeah. That's too much promotion. Otherwise. Uh, this is the end of the episode. Uh, we got some good recommendations. We had Navi recommended Better Call Saul, and uh, Josh recommended a great book by Pankaj Mishra called From the Ruins of Empire. Yes, and I'm recommending uh, In the Loop, and we're also recommending the trailer should be better in the world. Yes, listen, people, we need to do this. <laughs> All right, that's it. Bye. Good evening ladies and gentlemen this is your captain speaking sorry to say but there's been a slight delay due to the apocalypse having suddenly begun as you can see there's death destruction and chaos taking place all around us but don't you worry food and drinks will be served shortly and i would recommend checking out IVM podcasts to get some of your favorite indian podcasts we'll keep you going till this whole thing blows over thank you